before we get started, let me ask you, what is one thing that is important to you that I must accomplish in this conversation today? Um, I'll, I'll answer first, if that's okay. Uh, we, we are a tight, tight team. We have worked through COVID together. We worked pre-COVID together. We've been on a journey for a long period of time. And sometimes we are talking like this to each other. So we are saying the same thing. We are meaning the same thing. And we're coming from a great hearted place. And there can be a mediation sometimes between all of us. We'll say, hey, Ryan, Francisco's saying the same thing that you're saying, but you're understanding it differently. Hey, Francisco, Ryan is telling you exactly what you want to hear, but you're not hearing it. You're saying the same thing. And we, we, we oftentimes don't understand one another's personalities as much as we think we would, but we are best of friends and we are very close, close team. But our communication would be one thing that we want to be able to improve them. That's the one thing that if you could help us with, that would be great. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Sunny. I appreciate it. Let's go to the next person, Ryan. Yes, sir. Um, it, it's really that. It's uh, the same concept. We, we seem to be missing each other sometimes. Um, and uh, it tends to be when we are under pressure that that happens. If we're not under pressure, we find ourselves being able to communicate properly. But when it uh, when that pressure does come, uh, I don't know if we tend to go back to when before we met, we didn't know each other. <laughs> um, but there, there's some times where we just struggle to communicate. It never turns into anything more than just a misunderstanding. And it's never allowed us to not move forward. Okay, so, well, that's good. So you found a way to work around it. Yeah, I, for, for me, I think it's the same thing and that's just streamlining our communication to eliminate that time because sometimes it can become uh, a little lengthy to get to where we need to be. But when we get there, we run. Like, we like to run sooner, if you will. Sure, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you saying that to me. So, so the way I would look at it is you, you have same intentions. You have good intentions. You're all trying to do the best you can. You, in general, understand your styles, you know, while you're doing, as you said, not under stress, but under stress, your communication changes, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Very good. So that would be, is there any specific situation that has happened that you can give me as an example, just any one of you where you feel that could have been a much better way of getting along, communicating? I uh, can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> if uh, we're up, we're in the uh, we do loans as a as for a living. Yes. If um, if we're at towards the month end of month end, and uh, there is a loan that is uh, you know on the verge of of not funding, so we can get the month completed. Uh, it turned. It, you, you would find your, You would find the team turning into. Uh, you know, one of the three of us would take it upon themselves, and this this is different because one day I would do it, maybe Sunny would do it, the next loan, maybe Cisco would do it, but we just get at each other's throats a little bit, um, and not reflect about where we came from in that sense. I think I'm talking in circles right now, Manesh. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, well, I, I I think I know what you're saying. So. Um, to add to that, it's not maybe a scenario, but I coached these guys uh, for a very long period of time. And for a while there, I felt like, man, I'm telling you exactly what to do. My mentor is Rick Ruby. You guys know that. So I, I follow that path and I tell you guys, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do, we're going to do. And then when it's not done, I, I, I feel like I can't get through that way of communicating with that person. So I try a different angle. I try a different angle, but my angles usually go up, not down. So instead of taking the sensitive route, I maybe might become more passive aggressive or I might become more direct or I might say, you know what, or quit. Like say, you know what, do whatever you want to do, right? Versus maybe, I wish I knew what to say at that point to make my side of the communication more effective so they would get it. And I feel they feel the same way. I feel like Francisco sometimes wants to tell me something and Ryan will say, dude, he's telling you exactly what it is. You're just missing it. And um, I, I, I don't want to miss it anymore. 
I just want to. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And what would happen if that did not take place? If those kind of misunderstandings didn't take place, how would that look like? It hasn't turned into this yet. Uh, thank, knock on wood, thank God. But, and that's why I think I'm doing this more, you know, is uh, I think if it keeps up, we could, it could yeah, ruin it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you if said it didn't it. exist. What would we do if they oh, did if not it exist? Oh, if it didn't exist. If it didn't exist, we would be, we would be running. We'd be a well oiled machine running. I think okay. it's one of our biggest Achilles heel. Yeah. And how would that feel for you, Sunny? Stress free, less worry. Less yeah. worry. How about you, Ryan? Uh, if we were able to communicate better moving forward, uh, it would build further trust, further love for these two gentlemen, and um, in turn, probably break down a wall or two that I still have up that I'm protecting myself from. Interesting. Okay, good. How about you, Francisco? I think it would uh, eliminate the bad days. The bad days. Uh, right? Because... Uh -huh. uh, they're being nice, but it gets heated sometimes. We're yep. all in, so it gets heated. We, we get loud, but we always end it. But it drains you a lot afterwards. So we have to recover. And then, you know, it's not a bad day, but it was a bad moment in the day. And it doesn't make you want to be there at the moment. And we <laughs> love being here. So Thank we want to take that aspect that makes us not want to be here <laughs> because it's all of us. It's not just one of us. <laughs> it's all of us that have these reactions and these, these things. And we just want to fix it. Well, that sounds like a great idea. So thanks for opening up. I appreciate it. So to start, let me share a short video clip from a movie called Zootopia. Maybe some of you might have seen it. Maybe you know, I can see Ryan is smiling already, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you seen the one I'm talking about? Maybe you'll find out, right? So let's watch this and then analyze it. Give me a second. Oops. Mm. Can you see it? Coming through. This is Officer McCorn. We got a 1031. I got dibs. What? Officer Hawk, I am in pursuit. Woo, woo. Uh, I need you to run a plate. Flash is the fastest guy in there. He can run the plate like that. Wait. They're all slots? Are you saying that because he's a sloth, he can't be fast? Flash, flash, 100-yard dash. Buddy, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you, hmm. too. Hmm. Officer Judy Hap, CPD, how are you? I am doing fine. Well, what? Hang in there. Can I do? Well, I was hoping you could run a For you. Well, I was hoping you Today. could. Today. Well, I was hoping you could run a plate for us. We are in a really big hurry. What's the plate? Two nine T number. Two nine T H D zero three. Two nine T H D zero three. H D zero three. D. Mm -hmm. Zero. Three. Zero. Three. <laughs> hey, Flash, want to hear a joke? <laughs> no! Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, what do you call a three-humped camel? I don't <laughs> know. Pregnant. <laughs> Priscilla. Oh, no! Yes? Flash? What <gasps> do no. you call a three-humped camel? Uh, pregnant! Okay, great, three. we got it! Please jump. <laughs> Hurry! we got to beat the rush hour in. It's night! <laughs> okay. 
I would love to hear comments from each one of you. So who wants to share what is one thing you noticed in this particular communication? Oh, uh, I mean, the, <laughs> the rabbit couldn't get there fast enough. Just couldn't get there fast enough. It's just too important, interrupting, and, uh, you know, felt that even if she said uh, more words faster, that it would have, you know, oh, and wow. it never did anything. <laughs> it just <laughs> did not help, did it? No. But did the bunny get more frustrated, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about you, Francisco? What did you notice? Uh, I saw my adaptive state in the bunny and my normal state in the state in the fox. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. You want to hear a joke? Yeah. <laughs> After that frustration, but then the that there are times where I'm that bunny and I'm like, let's you know. Interesting. Sunny? I was cringing watching this. I'm like, oh God, just go. Just go. Hurry. Come on. Like this. this it's so slow that you like, God, I just felt for the bunny, you know? So Exactly. Exactly. You didn't feel for the sloth though, right? Okay. Because it is what it is. We are all different types of individuals here, right? Okay. And you will run into a bunny, a fox, or a sloth. The question is not whether you're going to run into these people. The question is, will you be aware of who you are running into? And are you adjusting your style to communicate to the one that you're in front of? So would it have helped Bunny to relax a little bit, take a deep breath, not lean in the face, not speed up, not keep interrupting, and just slowly, steadily have the conversation with Sloth? How would that have helped the Bunny? The joke wouldn't have came out of the, uh, the fox, most likely, right? If the fox put the joke out there, seeing the frustration in the Bunny, and however that fox acts, sly or not, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. So I had to, I had to finally put a joke on yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the fox is somebody who likes, so here is what it is. The bunny likes results right now. The fox is looking to be center of attention. And the sloth is looking to be friendly, supportive, relaxed, steady in the moment. Right? So if the sloth was in this case, obviously trying to help, if sloth was acting more like the bunny, the bunny would be somebody that customer service representative wise wouldn't be the best person. So imagine if you call somebody for a customer service situation and the bun person is like, tell me quickly what's going on wrong with you. Quickly, quickly, yes, yes. You'd be like, hey, relax. Let me explain my situation. This is what is going on with my cell phone, my company, my whatever it is going on, right? So if you were to hire a customer service representative and the bunny was the customer service representative, won't really work very well. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because the customer service representative has to practically handle a similar situation 10 times, 20 times a day. And the bunny would get frustrated. It's like, how come you can't solve your own problem? <laughs> Something like that. Whereas the sloth is being patient could have been speeding up a little bit compared to the bunny. The bunny would not be as frustrated, right? Now, the fox is looking to be center of attention and will always find a way to interrupt because the fox is not getting the attention. Would you agree with me on that? You understand what I'm saying, right? So if you have a team meeting going on and you have a couple of foxes in your room, you better give them some chance. Otherwise, they'll interrupt you at a time when you didn't want them to interrupt. So how does this apply to communication? The first is notice your style. The second, notice other person's style. And then match, mirror, accommodate for the other person's style. Because if you don't, what will happen? You'll get frustrated. <laughs> There's nothing else there, right? You will get frustrated. Now, if you want to reduce your stress, your frustration, you become aware that you have to learn to speak their language. So if you are taking notes, there are three components of the language we are going to talk about, okay? Yeah, so I would recommend 
writing down will help so if you can't find it i understand so the first one is called voice tonality did you notice the tone of the voice the bunny's tone was different from the fox in the slum so when you are communicating with somebody typically on the phone you want to pay attention to the tonality of the voice the second is the speed at which they are speaking the fox and the bunny spoke relatively fast the sloth spoke slowly and the third is the body language if you notice the bunny is leaning forward the sloth is relaxed when the fox tells the joke at the end of the joke pumping the bunny is like ha ah, you know that kind of stuff so everybody's tonality of the voice the speed at which they speak and the body language they use are going to be different and if you pay attention you can notice the differences enough and there are going to be two types of tone that we are going to talk about the first tone what i would call is people friendly hi how are you whether it is a fox or the sloth their tone is more people friendly what was the bunny's tone like in your opinion direct to the point Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, direct and business-like. So instead of saying not people-friendly, I would say business-like, which means that they are focused on business at hand. So, asking the fox, "How is the day going? How are you today? How was your weekend? What's your plan?" isn't going to work very well. Is that making sense to you? Mm-hmm. The fox is going to be like, okay, have fun, interaction. Let's talk about everything. Whereas with the bunny, you're going to be focused very specifically on, okay, you need this information. Let me get you this information so you can be on your way. The bunny is looking for the next challenge, the next mountain to climb, and how quickly can they climb it is how they look at life. Whereas the fox is looking to say, who will listen to me next? and the sloth is how can i be helpful accommodating make people get along stuff like that now we didn't cover all the four behavior styles disc but this is a quick version that i feel can help you understand that there are different people different styles and it's our job to pay attention to them so we speak in english and that's a language but the language that we are referring to is the tonality of the voice the speed and the body language and that's where the disc language comes from so you can pay attention to those three things you can notice other people's behavior style so you can notice whether they're speaking fast or slow are they friendly or not friendly and suddenly you can say okay i know how to account it so from today when you are receiving a phone call and the person and you answer the phone and the person is re- responding to you now start paying attention are they speaking fast are they friendly are they slow are they not friendly the moment you do that your brain switches to connecting with them in a way that you weren't going to connect before so how easy is it just to pay attention not much except we are so caught up in our life on a daily basis we are so caught up on what we are trying to do agenda wise what's in the front of us and how we view life that we think others are wrong and we are right so if i know english only and let's say francisco you know only spanish is that right or wrong neither exactly your language is fine my language is fine but if you think i'm speaking spanish is that going to be a problem yeah yeah and if you think i speak english and you keep speaking spanish to me would that be a problem yeah most well, certainly exactly so the first thing you and i need to pay attention to are we speaking the same language and the answer in most cases it's not we are not speaking the same language and then we wonder why are we not communicating so i went to guadalajara in last year july about a year ago now and i went to you know obviously they only spoke spanish in most places i walk into the restaurant and they speak pretty much everybody spoke spanish right 
So when I walk into the restaurant, the waiter speaks Spanish. How quickly does the person recognize that I do not speak Spanish? Body yeah. language. Very quickly. Very yeah. quickly. This is a gringo here, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, when he brings the manager who speaks English, how do I feel? Safe. Safe. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Maybe yeah. somebody understands me. That's what you and I have to create with the people is, can they feel that they understand me? Can, they, can I feel that they understand me and vice versa? If we do that consistently enough, then the barrier goes away. It becomes easier to do that. So let's cover some of the fundamentals of the DISC behavior start. Okay? And, just so you know, and just so you know, uh, Manisha, prior to jumping on the call, we spent about 30 minutes going over uh, playing a guessing game on each other's DISC profile. And then uh, we read our basic characteristic, uh, page six of the report. We didn't get to finish Francisco, but we spoke a little bit of it just as a refresher before the call, just so you know. That helps, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, good. So what did you learn from it? Were people able to guess, not guess? What was the situation? Nobody guessed correctly. Nobody guessed correctly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So what does that tell you? We he got the reverse. He, he got the reverse. I I wrote my guess before reading the reports. I was wrong about him. I was wrong about him. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So we just need to improve our understanding of the fundamentals of what a disk report is, right? Okay. And that will make your job a lot easier. Because if you do that, guess what will happen? You can pay attention anywhere and come up to a conclusion to say, okay, I can understand you speaking what language based on the observation that I have. Okay, so let me quickly show you on the screen a couple of things. So give me a second. Let me bring up this PowerPoint here. So this is the one I use for one of the core sessions that I did. And you all know about the core, so won't go into detail on that. Anyway, so the first thing you want to pay attention to is the D is the assertive, bossy type of person, the bunny. The I is the fun, friendly, right? These are the ones who want to get along in terms of being the center of attention. S is steady, right? And C is the data person. Okay? So this is the person who actually has what I would call desire for more information because they feel they don't know enough, right? Okay. And for, I think uh, Sunny already knows, but let me show this on the screen here. So I was born in a city called Agra, which is famous for Taj Mahal. Okay. Has anybody been to Taj Mahal? Sunny, I'm assuming you did. Yes. Okay. Yeah, actually two years ago, just before the pandemic restrictions started, I was in India and luckily we came back in time. So I published different books, Stop Hiring Losers, Million Dollar Team Secrets. I'm, I've been to Disney World over 200 times with my family, we homeschool our children. So the challenge for me was I felt like a loser. Why? Because what happened was after 12 years of being in computer programming, I got fired and it was one of those things. I went to the right school, got a good degree, found a job with high-end companies, and yet I was miserable. The reason I was miserable was not that I was not a good person. It's not that I didn't have talent. It did not mean I didn't have skills. The problem was I was put in the wrong position, square peg in the round hole. And it took me a while because initially I felt something was wrong with me. How come I'm, you know, I can't understand this, etc. But now I know that if people had done the assessments like Sunny has done with you, I would have been able to put myself in the right position and I would have thrived. So like 20 years, I've been doing this now and I enjoy what I do because this is fun for me. So when you have the right role, you do the best things possible, which is why Sunny is using this information so he can build a team around him that is strong, does things that are required. And more important, everybody is feeling more in their role, fun, productive at the same time. Is that making sense to you what I'm talking about? Right? Okay. So 
we watch the zootopia so disc is the universal language of how you do what you do now maybe you've seen the movie wonder woman the person who created that character is also the person who founded the theory behind the disc william marston in fact they made a movie about him not too long ago as well now, as you can see not everybody is i d or c or s right so there are people with different numbers majority of the people are i and s which means that you will find people who are relatively friendly enough the d and c population is relatively less okay so let's take a look when you are in that mode let's say d a d projects energy which makes people feel fear like you're being asked to go to the principal's office does anybody connect with what i'm talking about has anybody yeah. had that feeling right the police the police the, popo. the police right <laughs> Just me, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah. So people who are relatively low D, whose scores are much lower, okay, when they are around somebody like Rick Ruby, they feel intimidated. Okay. The second is I optimistics. This is the fun, friendly, the fox. They make you feel like you're at a fun party and you met a long lost friend. The S is the calm, relaxed sloth. They want you to feel you're okay the way you are, no pressure. On the other hand, the compliance, this is a data person, analytical person. This is a person who will make you feel like you are not perfect. Have you ever felt somebody is looking at you and there is something wrong with your shirt or something like that? Has anybody had that feeling? You are being judged at that moment. Well, that's what the C, compliance people make you feel. Okay. So what is the D looking for? The D is looking for results. So when you talk to D, you should be talking in terms of results language whether it's a client, whether it's a partner that you're working with, you want to be focused on results because they are looking for bottom line, what's happening. They're faster paced people, they're direct, they're impatient, they're efficient, but not neat. And their stance is forward leaning, hand in pocket. They'll, they want to take charge. So if you see the body language of the bunny, they're likely to be wanting to take charge. They're not looking for opinions, just like you saw in the bunny, only the facts. Who has this license plate 290HD03, right? Okay. Then you go to the interaction, which is the influence. This person is looking for interaction. Who can I talk to next? So they're always looking to talk to somebody. They have never met a stranger, whether it's in the grocery line, etc. They're faster paced people, they're indirect. They are quite often disorganized. This is not the person you are going to give detailed checklist oriented tasks to. They are a little bit sloppy, obviously, because disorganized. Their stance is feet spread. They usually use a lot of their hands, animated gestures, etc. Let's go to the steadiness. This is a person looking for stability. They're relatively slower paced, people oriented. They want to get along with people. They don't like conflict, so their communication is indirect. Okay, they are possessive type of people. They like to belong. They have some systems, but they are really on the sloppy side. Their body language is relaxed, leaning back, not trying to impose on people. And usually they don't show too much emotions. They have what we call a poker face. The compliance person is looking for facts. They're like, hey, there is more important information without which I cannot make a decision. That's their mindset. Very good. They feel if they know more, they'll make a better decision. The reality is not always the case, right? They are relatively slower paced. In fact, they come across aloof to people. They are critical in their approach of conversation. They don't want to get along with people. They are extremely focused on the process, making sure things are done right the first time. And they come across distant from people. You don't want to go touch those people. You don't want to be hugging those people. And they tend to ask detailed questions. So the question I have for you is, how does that help you knowing today, knowing looking at it, looking at some of the clients that you work with, how can this knowledge of knowing what's a D look like, I look like, S look like, C look like, how does it help you? Um, I think it helps because we can figure out their language, communicate with them and their speed of, or <clears throat> figure out if they're, what their tone is and communicate in that tone. Very good, very good, very helpful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then you'll form the bond and rapport. <laughs> How about you, Ryan and Francisco, anything that you want to add? Uh, I think it just gives you better insight on how to adapt to them at the moment. Uh, because if you want to, like you said, if you want to influence, you have to adapt to who they are and compliment them for them to understand you. So that definitely helps. Very good, very good. Just, I, 
I thought he was a DI. Not he's a C. <laughs> I thought Francisco was a very high D I. And he's not. He was more uh, yeah. Okay. And how about you? People thought you were a SC or what? Uh <laughs> They thought, I thought, they, they it was thought I was, yeah, they thought I was uh, pretty uh, close to, they had a back, yeah. I thought he was an SD. Yeah. I wrote that down pre-taking <laughs> pre the test. And I think he was an ID and he flipped it, he was a DI. Yeah, he's a very high DI. This is, uh, but this helps out, um, we're already here, I mean, we're here to open our views and, and learn to how to communicate. So how this is going to help, it's going to help grow our business so we can communicate with more buyers in our industry and secure those buyers the way we uh, we build a relationship, build rapport with them. Sure. Uh, that goes in with our partners as well. Absolutely. So if, you, if somebody calls you and you're answering the phone, immediately, first of all, you have to be enthusiastic enough, right? Otherwise, I'm people are like, oh. super yeah. stoked. But exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, once you've done that, the next is to put them in a place where they can converse with you more, they talk more. Because the more they talk, the more you can observe. The more you can say, okay, what is their tone? How fast are they speaking? Are they interested in having a friendly conversation or are they just looking for information? Because what that does, it moves you towards building that rapport. You have enough information. On the other hand, most salespeople tend to talk more. They're looking to talk, 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 but then they're not paying attention to the style of the other person. And hence they are missing clues, which are very critical in building that rapport with the person. Because if the moment the person at the other end feels that you're not speaking their language, what will happen? Yep, they tune you out, yep. right? They tune you out. It's like, oh, this person doesn't speak my language. And that's why you have to be paying attention to the first 30, 60 seconds of the conversation, because that's when you figure out. Now, you might be like, Minesh, how can I know somebody's a D, I, S, or C? Well, we went over a couple of things already, and I will show you on the screen as well. Here is the first thing. You have to pay attention. Is this person, relatively speaking, fast or slow? Number one. Number two, is this person coming across as people-friendly or not? Now, people-friendly people tend to ask questions and have engaged conversation like, how was the weather? How are you feeling today? How was your weekend? What's your plan for the weekend? How are the children doing? When they have that opening for a conversation, then they are more people friendly. On the other hand, if they're like, hey, what's happened to my file? You know, so it's like, yeah. and you know, they're looking for very specific information, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it puts you into a control of a situation to know, oh, here is where I need to be right now. Now, let me give you a little bit of a scenario which happens to most of us. Now, let's say you and I go to a place where we haven't been before. So imagine a used car parking lot. You're looking to buy a car. You're going to a dealer that you don't know about. You don't know the salesperson there. And you're buying a brand that you are not exactly sure is the right car for you. But for some reason, you're going to be buying there. Now, regardless of whether you're high I, high D, etc., how are you going to walk in there feeling confident and trying to make friends or something else? What would guarded, happen? Guarded, guarded. Very guarded. What kind of questions are you going to ask? How much is this? Yes. Then what? Safety rating on this vehicle. Yes. So you're asking detailed questions now. Mm -hmm. How many owners have you had here? Correct? Yeah. Why? Because you are skeptical. So remember, if the person trusts you, they have less questions. If the person trusts, does not trust you, they have more questions. The person who has more questions in the disk profile is typically a C. So if they are leaning towards asking too many questions, you might have to work a little harder on the rapport. Because somewhere there is some skepticism. And when they have a high level of skepticism, you need to be working through it. Because when you trust somebody, your number of questions become less. Now, you may still want information to satisfy you, but the questions are not coming from a place of, I don't trust you, so I'm looking for information to reject you. Mm -hmm. Do you see the difference? Go ahead. 
Manish, question for you. Um, I'm missing. Is it, do we want to mirror their profile or do we want to be the opposite? Because we all heard the word, the phrase opposites attract. Very right? true. When they're a dominant, so, do I want to be a sub? You know, no, do, whatever they are is what you become. Okay. So I will give you an example of that in a minute here. So whatever they are is you become for the moment. It doesn't mean you have to stay that way all the time. Mm. Once you have built rapport, now you can take the conversation where you want to go. Right? But until the rapport is built, and how do you know the rapport is built? Their guard is down. They're relaxed. <laughs> Pardon? They're laughing. <laughs> they're laughing. They're having fun with you. Right? They now have a feeling of comfort with you. And until that point is reached, what ends up happening is you are likely to not be able to communicate the way it needs to be communicated for them to take action on whatever you want them to take action on. Because they'll find reasons, stalls, objections for that very reason. But once the trust is established, they see that you are trying to help the way that you are trying to help will solve their problem, guess what? They are now open-minded to do business with you and tell you everything they need you know, anything they need from you, they will ask you and they will feel comfortable in your answer. Do you know what I'm talking about? But until you do that, that's the key. So let's talk about opposites attract. Opposites attract in relationships. So if you're a high D, you're likely to go attract an S in a relationship. Mm, okay. Because, yeah. pardon? I get that. You know, guys, I'm going to ask this question for our group. When we're dealing with customers, clients, prospects, mirror, mirror. Mm -hmm. when we're dealing in relationship with the referral partner, the builder, the realtor, opposite. Am I so right? you will well, so let me clarify this. You're going to always mirror people. Yeah. That's the first step. You are naturally going to attract the opposite to you to some degree. And that happens in more in emotional relationships. Mm -hmm. So in terms of husband, wife, et cetera, mm -hmm. you will naturally attract somebody who's not your style. Yeah. Everybody here is married, who's not married or who's married. I know Sunny's married, right? Mm -hmm. My wife's a, a, a stay at home, not, not, so she loves the house and staying in the house and being a hermit in the house. And I like being out of the house and being away from the house. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out outside yeah. the house. There you are. <laughs> Opposites attract. He's a stray dog. Do you see the point? This is exactly yeah. how that works. I'm an outgoing extrovert. My wife is not. So, Manesh, can we take that a step further in the sense of um, now let's use let's use the term best friend or good friends, right? Um, growing up and you have that, that handful of best friends. Would you, would you say that same concept? Quite often. Okay. But and also you have to remember there are common interests as well. As well, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's a factor. Yeah. yeah, that's another factor which will play a role. If you both like hockey, then that will make you, you know, a friend, right? right? But yeah. Typically, outgoing people, that person will attract somebody who's not outgoing. Because right. imagine, the fox likes to talk. And let's say the sloth wants to listen. Doesn't that make a good relationship automatically? Yes. <laughs> it bounces. Yes. Yes. It compliments. Yeah. Compliment. And because it compliments, it just makes this life more enjoyable for each other. One likes to talk, the other not. Perfect. Good relationship right there. Yeah, into the end. Yep, exactly, exactly. So opposites attract in relationships. But in terms of communicating with people, when you are trying to get your point across, when you're trying to be understanding about the other person, then you must mirror. Yeah. The breathing pattern, you know, neurolinguistic programming. So you know that you can use the breathing pattern, the head nod, all these other things that are available that you can immediately say, yes, this is the way to talk to this person. 
and it doesn't make it difficult unless you just are not paying attention but what is the breathing what is the breathing pattern or breathing me- method uh, i don't know if the word is method but oh. the word is more about the way people breathe is at a very deep level similar in terms of your body then the person feels more in sync with you so if somebody has shallow breath somebody has deeper breath so if you can notice that about other people and you can mirror that breathing pattern then it connects because our bodies are acting very similar when the bodies are acting very similar people tend to be similar their thought processes are similar their their uh, what do you call attention is similar and that's what you're looking for is that making sense to you so just like nodding your head moving your arms breathing is another thing it's very similar so anyway let's just show you the slide about getting with people on the hold on second here in fact why don't we do a short quiz here that won't be fun sure Mm-hmm. Okay, can you see the screen here? Yep. Okay, Francisco, go ahead and read that. Known for his loyalty to friends and as a team player, hard worker, and a tough researcher, puts a premium on friendship, sometimes to a fault. A man at peace with himself, Relati- uh, relates easily and warmly in small groups, but freezes in public forums. Is a warrior, top achiever who's cool under pressure. Family is sacred. Shortcoming may be his inability to act quickly on unexpected turn of events. Primary Good. tendency. Yep. Tell me the primary and the secondary. Anyone or all of you, whichever. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yeah, Any other guesses? This is going to be a, a yes. Okay. okay. So how did you come to that conclusion? Because this is me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so keywords uh, such as uh, premium on friendship, mm-hmm. um, inability to act quickly, mm-hmm. um, warrior. Those are three mm-hmm. big things that stuck out to me. Okay. That relate to the back end of the disc. Okay. Um, Good. Any other comments from anybody else? I feel like it's an SC, and I think it's only because he said a man at peace with himself, steady. Mm-hmm. Um, he just it seems like somebody that keeps going. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you can be a little bit of everything, but I think that's what might be saying SC. Thank you. So anytime all of you are good observations on both of your part there. So loyalty to friends is an S. Team player, S. Researcher, C. You see that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Warrior, C. So this is, you can say SC, which would be because they start with loyalty to friends, right? Okay. So that's the answer I would say. So here is the quick thing which I talked about. If somebody talks fast, not people friendly is a D. Somebody talks fast, but people friendly is an I. Somebody talks slow and is people friendly, then it is an S. And then it is a slow talker, not people friendly. Does that make sense to you, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So now you can pay attention to the speed at which people talk, the type of communication they give you. You can immediately come to a conclusion. Okay, I can see that this person might be a D or an I, S or a C. And now I can modify my style for the benefit of communication to go there. Okay, good. So in your situation, you're on the phone a lot, you're meeting people, however, you can start paying attention to it. You can put something near your desk and say, hey, is this person talking fast or slow? And then make that observation as a part of your daily routine. Because that will definitely, definitely help you as well. So that's the general concept of DISC that I think everybody needs to know. Now, in your life, let's talk about people who are there. Can you guess some of the people who are in your life and say, hey, who is the S, C, D, I? Can you, can you give me some examples of people in your real world? Uh, Billy, as an example. Okay. What do you say Billy is? Billy is an I. 
Yeah, he's fun, friendly, fast talker, people friendly. And you say D because he can be assertive, bossy. Um, but I almost want to give him a C because he can be yeah. uh, data driven and okay. not people friendly. But that's when he drinks. I would say an SC. You would say SC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would say SC because he's uh, he's very talkative and can uh, be voiced or be, be, you know, likes to talk to people. Who is this? Billy? We have a friend by the name of Billy Young. Okay. He's a uh, co partner uh, for a software firm. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they created a company. There's three of them that own their company. Mm -hmm. And out of those three, uh, it's kind of funny. They all are similar <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in fashion. But um, this gentleman is very, he seems to be outgoing when we are having a, a spirit or two. But when it comes down to the core, I find him to be uh, over analyzing, extremely cautious, um, and but is very able to get along with people. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's definitely a positive, right? Okay. So you need to know those things about people, right? Because the more you know that, the easier it gets for you to communicate with that person. Fair enough, right? right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's definitely a positive in that situation that you can work with. Now, each one of you has reports already. You read the behavioral characteristics on page six. Have you gone through the communication checklist? No, we, we did not have a chance to do that. We were planning on doing that after this call. Okay, so there are two pages called ways to communicate and ways not to communicate. So what I would recommend to you to do is to tell other people so for example, let's say Sunny is reading his report. We would ask Sunny, Sunny, what are the ways that you like people to communicate with you, right? We have patiently draw personal goals and work with him to help him achieve those goals. Listen and be responsive. Clearly define, preferably in writing individual contributions. Listen to him. Keep at least yes. three feet away from him. <laughs> 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 Give pros and cons on ideas. Respect his quiet demeanor. Have the, I don't think I'm quiet. Have the facts in logical order. Be prepared with be prepared with the facts and figures. Look for hurt feelings or personal reasons if you disagree. <laughs> I don't, know, I, don't oh, have, I love this thing. I don't have hurt feelings. <laughs> Use the proper buzzwords that are appropriate to his expertise. This Pro is amazing. Provide a friendly environment. Present your case softly, non-threateningly, with a sincere tone of voice. See, okay. very quick. Yeah. 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 The goal is to email everybody awesome. and then re talk about it on Monday's first meeting. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so this is the list here, right? So, and what doesn't work for him is also here as well, right? Okay. Huh? Touch his body when talking to him. He doesn't like that. So, <laughs> okay. So, you want to be staying three feet away from somebody like Sonny because that's not what he's looking for, right? right. So, you and I want to be aware of the style of communication that people have and then use the ways to communicate ways not to communicate to become more clear on what works and what doesn't work what i want to show you is this doesn't have to take too long in terms of building rapport so let me show you a video clip Who is Moser? <laughs> this showed me that I'm not, I'm not as close to Billy. I thought he was an ID, and that means I just probably know him when he's drinking and partying at house. Mm -hmm. Who was David Moser? Um, in my head, a uh, S. I think a uh, C S. A C S. You think data driven, slow talker, not people friendly? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. So I. Sorry about that, Manish. We were talking about a coworker. Uh, mm -hmm. Former. Coworker. That's okay. Yeah. So let me show you the screen here. Oh, Sheldon. Sheldon, what the hell are you doing? Same thing I've been doing for three days, trying to figure out why electrons behave as if they have no mass when traveling through a graphene sheet. With marbles? I needed something bigger than peas, now didn't I? 
Sheldon, when was the last time you got any sleep? I don't know, two, three days, not important. I don't need sleep. I need answers. I need to determine where in this swamp of unbalanced formulas. <laughs> okay, Sheldon, what happens to our neuroreceptors when we don't get enough REM sleep? Impaired cognitive function. Right. So march in there, brush your teeth, and go to bed. But I don't want to go to bed. I'm going to count to three. One. Oh, all right. <laughs> that was funny, wasn't it? Yeah. What did you learn from that exercise? That we need sleep? No, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> So we learned, hard ass. No, no. What we learned, uh, I know Ryan's gonna answer exactly how I was gonna answer. So go ahead, Ryan. Um, clearly that uh, Sheldon is a C in this uh, uh, in this episode, and that um, old girl walks in and for a quick moment changes from a D down to a down to that C down to that S to communicate with him and then immediately goes back into her d and gets get your ass in bed yes. <laughs> part yeah. of my french that, that's, that's, that's what i see too is it, she was a d went to went to c to be slow talker mm -hmm. and then went back to d correct she used his language sheldon what happens to our neuroreceptors when we don't get enough rem sleep so she's using his lingo right to connect build rapport, and once the rapport is built, she's like, hey, <laughs> do what I tell you to do, right? <laughs> That's how communication takes place. You have to build the bridge long enough, strong enough, that now the person will do what you ask them to do. Otherwise, what will happen? They're going sideways, right? That's why taking the first few seconds to build that bridge is pivotal. So whenever you're not getting along or communication is not going the way you want, slow down. Say, Francisco, let me understand what you just said. Are you saying this, 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 this? Francisco is like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Great. You have a very valid point. And then you move towards what you want to communicate. Because until then, Francisco isn't paying any attention to you. So you've yeah. never read uh, uh, How to Make Friends and Influence People, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? So Ryan is in mode of I. Do you see that? Yeah, he's in the mode of I right now. Yeah. yeah. Fun, friendly, right? He wants to be center of attention. I got the jokes, all of them, right? <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Trust me, I'm not saying anything wrong yeah, because no, no, you're good, you're good. this is exactly how it is. And you pay attention to this, you're like, oh, okay. With Ryan, I'm going to be smiling, fun, and friendly. We call that spicy McBain. <laughs> Pardon? We call it spicy McBain. Spicy, spicy McBain. McBain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, do you see how this applies in your day to day life? Because mm -hmm. if you start paying attention like that, with people in your life, it will certainly make a difference, right? So the other part that I want to end with is to realize that we all have a purpose. Just being showing up to work isn't enough, right? We all have certain hidden, not known maybe, but driving deep. Some may be known, some may not be known. So here is something which drives me. So let me show you this video clip here, which drives my behavior, which drives me, my motivator in terms of life, right? Because everybody has their motivators, right? I'm not just talking about the motivators from the report. So give me a second. <clears throat>
Was it? What is the voting? Is this helpful, guys? Pretty good, right? Yeah, because it gave me a better, under a better understanding of this, the, the D. I thought it was like one way or the other, but if you look like. It can go up or down. Yeah. Yeah. I just think the extremes, don't we? As, yeah, as we men, the extreme, as yeah. men, or at least as the men that we are. We so what was that song about? Oh, it didn't play. It didn't play. No, no. sorry, in the next room. We were, <laughs> no, we were waiting this entire time. I'm sorry, I would have said something. Yeah, we thought maybe you were having technical difficulties. Which may be, which may be the case, you know what I'm saying? So you may be yeah. right. Nash, why don't you go and sing that for us? <laughs> <laughs> There's that I again. <laughs> Have you heard the song Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon? Yep. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. When you're coming home, I don't know when. But we'll get together then, Dad. You know we'll have a good time then. What's the song about? Thank you. Uh, the song is about... Uh, a father who is um, too busy to, to be spending with his son. And then uh, through life, it switches. And now the son turns to be too busy for the father. And uh, they see it the entire time because they're talking about it. They just never change or reflect on it. It's just all spoken. Thank you. You did a great job. Yeah. You did a great job of summarizing. I heard that song before I had any kids. And I told myself, I will never be that dad. So guess what? I homeschool my children. Okay? I'm with my children pretty much all the time. You know? So if you pay attention to people around you and you make that a priority, your life, your relationships are much better. My daughter is 18. A lot of people complain, hey, my teenager doesn't listen to me, this, that. I have no such issues. Sunny, have you talked to my daughter? Yeah. Yeah. M uh, Muskan, right? Muskan, 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 yes. Muskan, 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 Muskan. I'm sorry. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. She's doing so, big things. She's doing huge things too. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Well, the main thing is what? If I build the rapport, it works. If I don't build the rapport, it doesn't work. Get on that level and then be yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So what you're learning today is to create that foundation of relationship. Don't just assume it's there. Yes. Yep. Good. Sunny, any questions, comments before we wrap up here today? Um, you know, this is my first time undergoing uh, your training. And uh, we've been talking, for, Manesh, we've known each other a couple of years now. And we've been talking about this forever. But I just didn't have a place where I had the team that I felt bonded with, connected with. Even if the if my team disbanded now, it's not a team thing. It's more like these men are important to me in my life. Was this helpful, guys? Yes. Was this helpful, Ryan? I I want to. Uh, yes, is the okay. answer. Yes. So Very so uh, what I'd like for us to do, and um, Nash, please tell us if this is okay, or tell us what is normal afterwards. Uh, after this, we conclude with Manesh here. Let's read each other's out loud ways to and not to communicate. And then we'll commence this. And let's come back to this for the next, you know, three to four weeks yeah, and spend, right. spend 30 minutes each okay. week doing a training on this because this will help us not just identify patterns and recognize DISCs in the field for sales, mm -hmm. but also in our relationships, mm -hmm. also in, in just general life. You know, imagine I, 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 my goal is to try to make us master communicators. Will I succeed? I don't know. I don't know. But I know this is the step in the right direction. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that tremendously. So thanks again for the opportunity, Francisco, Ryan, and Sunny. And I look forward to connecting with you folks in person. Sunny, I might see you next week then. You may see me next week. Yep. Are you, okay. you're, headed, you're headed to Miami, right? Yes, yes, I have the next person coming on, but go ahead, okay. Francisco, right. go ahead. What did you want to say? I just had a quick question because my adaptive style is like balanced, pretty balanced, and I want it with the high C, higher C. Like, he has two that are mirroring each other, a DI and then a, a C. Is it okay to have those three or? Well, let it... me cover that conversation some other time a little okay. bit. Is that okay with you? Sorry about yeah. not answering that question. No problem.